we've got a 10. I'm Stephanie Bradley, and we wanted to do Blessings, which is the first song. And I was talking about Laura Story, who writes the music. And she, she had a really rough life. You know, like when you get married and you're young and you think, oh, everything's going to be great and there's not going to be anything wrong. And, oh, my goodness, you don't even know. That's just like saying about marriage itself. But she actually, her husband ended up having a brain tumor. And it was really tough. And she's like, how can this happen? How, you know, bad things happen to people. I know that a lot of y'all are nurses, nurse practitioners, you know, and I, I'm just letting you know that life is really tough. And I know that a lot of people say, oh my goodness, how could God let this happen to me? But there are trials in life and you can either look into the Bible and say, hey, I have faith to believe and I'm going to get through this. I'm going to put my faith in Jesus. But if you never had any trials, why would you be looking? I have a, a young lady who came to me, and she's like going, oh my gosh, I've never really had anything bad happen to me. My parents protected me all my life, and now I'm on my own. And it's so difficult. And I don't know if I can handle it. But you know, each time that you go through something, and this lady, she, she did not have a faith in Jesus. So it gave me that chance to say, hey, you know what? There is a different way. Because if you never went searching, you're not going to find Jesus. Can we say a quick prayer? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together today to worship your holy name. Even as we praise your name today, God, we have come here with different needs. We have come here with different ones for ourselves and for our loved ones. Father God, today we pray that your spirit will reach out to everyone who needs you. We will meet everyone at the point of their need. Father God, let us have the hope. Give us the hope in our hearts that we have in Jesus, that whatever we go through, you are with us. May your word dwell in our hearts today, renew our hearts and go with us, and your presence go with us into the week. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. amen.
to this actual song, and maybe when they go into Sunday school, we'll teach them how to do it, okay? Okay, you ready? Okay. Swing low, swing, oh, no, that's a different one. Oh, Bend low. Kind of bunch us outside, come in. <laughs> Bendo, 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 Thank you. 
We welcome you in the name of the Lord to St. Paul Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you're here this Sunday morning. We welcome you to be able to take a little time to look through our worship bulletin. And at the very back, you'll see opportunity to write down information. If you're visiting and you've not taken time to give us your contact information or you're visiting for the first time, Please take time to fill that out, or there's a visitor card as well. We'd love to properly welcome you. Um, and if any of us amongst us would like to stand, you're visiting this morning. Calabash always has a warm welcome. I was going to say, no pressure. <laughs> there may be a few. Miss Dee Dee, I knew there was a few. <laughs> Welcome, Humphrey. <laughs> now, this is a true Calabash member because he came, found an empty drum, and sat down. so glad that you're here this morning. There are a few announcements to share, and um, we have February kicking off. We were blessed last week with a really productive leadership retreat. Very grateful for our leaders and elders that were part of that. And you will be having a congregational meeting where a new vision and mission statement will be presented to the congregation probably in early March. We are thankful for the good work, the ways that that will direct us as we plan for ministry and mission here at St. Paul. Also, we have um, a very important date coming up. I regret that it's going to create a, a bit of a struggle. <laughs> Ash Wednesday is February the 14th. Uh -oh. Yes. <laughs> Some of us did not go oh uh oh Yes, last week when announced. But it will be with services here at St. Martin's Evangelical Lutheran Church, noon, and then 7 p.m. You'll see it in the e-blast. Please put it on your calendar. I know that's Valentine's Day. We are <laughs> we're going to have a very full day, <laughs> is my hope. You'll have time for reflection and meditation and preparation for Lent, and then good chocolate <laughs> with friends and family and celebrate the love you have for one another. But I apologize, it's our liturgical calendar and I thought, oops, we did not highlight that last week. Any other announcements amongst us that, from ministry areas that we need to report from? We did celebrate last week, and I just wanna take a moment, that our early children's ministries program was given four stars with Texas Rising Stars. And we have Beth Fultz here and Bruce Fultz. We're very grateful for the ways that that represents hard work, preparation, and excellence. Exemplary rating for our <coughs> young children's program for educating from infants up to preschool. And we have some of our young ones here this morning. We're so grateful for the teachers and the administration staff. Keep them in your prayers. They are busy with 50 students this spring, winter spring, I should say, and um, we celebrate that. You'll have seen it in eBlast again this week. Also, Sharon graciously highlighted our memory verse for the month. Take time, 
Meditate on those memory verse. They're selected to help lift us up and give us a sense of how we're going forth in the month ahead. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand as able. Join me in the call to worship. It is good to sing praises to our God. God is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. Great grace is the Lord, and abundant, abundant in power, power whose understanding, understanding is beyond measure. measure. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God with laugh. You take pleasure in those who fear you and hope in your steadfast love. Uh, this is the time for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Great God of the universe, you set the stars on course in the heavens. The earth radiates your glory and honor. The rain never falls without your knowing it. The fields produce their harvest according to your design. We bow down in adoration at, our, at how you care for your children. We gather gladly to herald your encompassing acts of goodwill. Hear us as we respond by giving your praise. Amen. 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 Please join me in the call to confession. We have been baptized and claimed in the name of Jesus Christ for a lifetime of service. Christ unites and equips us to live out the gospel together in service. Let us seek this path together through Christ's restorative grace and communion. O oh God, you heal the brokenhearted. Save us from sin when we inflict pain on our neighbors. We bear grudges against those who deceive us. We seek revenge on those who hurt us. Some we judge inferior, since they don't meet our standards. Others we deem unworthy of our respect and support. Jesus had compassion upon all. Forgive us, O oh God 
when our hearts are hardened against neighbors in need. I should answer pardon. Hear the good news. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. God is merciful and just. And Jesus Christ promises redemption to all that, to all that believe. As we turn from our old ways and respond with faith to Christ's call, we receive the assurance that we shall be saved. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace, we were called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Let us now greet and share the peace of Christ with one another. We have a good group talking. Chuck. Peace of Christ. Any sound? <laughs> Friends, it is time for the young disciples' message. Young disciples, please come forward, and young at heart are always welcome. Will you come and sit with me here on the cushions or on the pew? Get a seat that you're comfy in. See if I can get this to move a little better. <laughs> so glad to see you all. I appreciate that some of us who are out and about and they're coming, got to take a seat right there. I want you to think about when you have ever been sick or you have ever had maybe a family member or friend who was ill or sick? Can you remember how it felt? Do you have a sense? I don't know if our mic is on. I apologize. Okay. It felt like they were like at the hospital. It felt like they were maybe serious and at the hospital, yes. When we're sick, we feel very sometimes what? Tired maybe? Or mm. Um... Maybe something. Maybe something where we just want it to be over, don't we? We don't feel good. We maybe hurt. Our body maybe hurts. Maybe our stomach or our head. Maybe sometimes we just feel very tired. We're told today in the passage from the gospel of chapter 1 that Jesus is the healer in our lives. That Jesus has come to love us and restore us and be with us when we hurt. And through prayer and through reading of God's word and being together, the Lord Jesus 
helps us, strengthens us through our fellowship and worship, and wants us to draw near to him when we are not doing well. So I want you to remember this week that the Lord is our healer, that Jesus is working through a multitude of ways to support us and uplift us, okay? And I hope your school year, we're halfway through and February starts, that it's a special February. It goes by fast. Let's pray together and will you pray after me? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you that you are the great healer. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for sitting with me. Good to have you. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Gracious God, prepare our hearts and minds to hear and to receive your word for our lives today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first scriptural lesson will be coming from the book of Psalms 147, 111, 20c. (coughs) Praise the Lord. How good it it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. With, with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes the grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Join with me in the reading of the second scriptures taken from the Gospel of Mark, verses 29 through 39. We are given a description of Jesus' first physical healing. Hear these words that speak to the power of Christ's mission and the proclaiming of God's kingdom here. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So when he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up, the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various dis diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed, and Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they explained, they exclaimed, everyone's looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. The word of the Lord for our daily living. Friends, we're given an opportunity as we come into February to look at the ways we're starting 2024. Breathe in. How are you doing? Where are your needs? How has January been? And as we begin February, statistically, I hope and pray those of us who have put New Year's resolutions if you have support, you can continue on. Many don't reach out to help work in the areas you want restoration, to open up and say these are areas of healing that I need. Friends, this new year, as we begin, I think it's timely that we're in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. This gospel is shorter. Mark has a way in which he just has to speed through, get it done. He has this tempo. They say that you can feel the way he writes, the way he emphasizes stories and activity and action, that he wants you to know this Jesus who is about the mission of God. Every day is packed with the ways in which he is proclaiming God's kingdom, engaging others to come and be a part. So our passage this morning follows last week from chapter 1, where Christ was in the synagogue in Capernaum, and he cast out the evil spirits that battered and oppressed the, young, the man. And the spirits knew who he was. They knew his divinity, they knew he was God, and Christ commanded, and they were silenced. The power that we see in the way Christ is so clear about his mission and who he is, is what should be leaping off of the page for us this morning. He declares he is the restorer, and he is the healer of our lives. Now, I don't know for you, but I know for me, when I hear the account of his engagement with Andrew's mother-in-law, it's such a difference. It's from being in a formal context in the synagogue, worshiping on the Sabbath, and the extraordinary exchange he has, and then he goes, they believe it was possibly 
Andrew, Simon and Andrew's home was very close to the synagogue. Probably the term in the Greek is adjacent. They walk a few steps, they go into his home to be together, and of course, Andrew shares with him his heart, his burden. His mother-in-law has fever, and what that would mean in the first century is that she was very ill. Fever, they did not have the benefits of the antibiotics that we take for granted, the ways in which we treat common illnesses that would very quickly become life-threatening in the time that they lived. When the fever is high, convulsions, the ways in which cardiac arrest can occur, it was not just a mild physical ailment. She was, they say, commentators here, gravely ill. So when Jesus lovingly and with few words goes to her and takes her hand, and see, that's symbolic. When Christ heals, he always personally engages us. There's contact made. There's symbolism of the ways in which Jesus' love for us, humanity, for the conditions we are struggling with, he is intimately engaged. He takes her hand, and he lifts up her hand and lifts her up, and they, she stands. And the account is so simple. But for the fact she is restored enough to go about her duties, to be the hostess, to also be engaging. See, some of us miss the significance of her serving. That term is the same Greek term, diakonio, that deals with a response to receiving the word of God. A response of encountering the living Messiah. A response that God is with us. And she chooses to follow. It is clearly, when we go further into the Gospel of Mark, Andrew's mother-in-law is one of the disciples that tends to Christ's body from the crucifixion she becomes a loyal disciple. Now, that does not mean that Christ healed and all followed, but this is a very significant exchange, and it's a faith response that she has to the healing she has received. Our passage this morning has us ponder how we understand God at work in the lives of of those that we pray for and those that we love who are dealing with illness, those of us who may be going through illnesses, those of us who are battling possibly emotional, spiritual, mental struggles that are heavily grounded in life circumstances, losses, demands, generational ways in which we are addressing suffering and the needs of our own lives and our families. We come to the communion table today, and we are invited to bring all that we are bearing, all that we are experiencing, and trust our living God with those areas in our lives. To seek and understand, Christ does a declaration in chapter 1 of this is who I am. I am the restorer and the healer. And I am called to proclaim the kingdom of God is here. I am fulfilling the covenant that is new, that the prophets of old declared, the signs, the wonders. Jesus is manifesting. Christ, in chapter 1, steps into his mission. And what happens after she attends to Simon, Peter, and Christ Many come to the door. And there is this relationship of just, we have a quick insight into what is the day that Christ deals with every day. How does he move through his day? He is about restoring and healing, but he also takes time for solitude and prayer. The restoring practices that sustain him in his own mission. And he has a way that he models this 
and then he engages, but then he is clear when God calls them to go elsewhere. You think the needs are so great. Why not stay in Capernaum? We know Capernaum is where Christ probably had his home as an adult through his three years of mission. But he knew he was called to go out into the region of Galilee and be about sharing the good news, the gospel that frees us, that brings salvation, and that in his declarations of care, in his healings, in his casting out of spirits that destroyed and created such injuries, the numbers were beyond counting of the needs in the first century. We know the high, high level of illnesses that were dominant and predominant within this time, as well as the ways in which the prophets had proclaimed how the Messiah, the Son of God, would come and would be ministering. See, what does Christ say? I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. He models those who put their trust and love in the living God will receive the means and the power to serve. It is the most honorable role that we can have. Don't allow this passage to be hit by the time and the condition that those who were of means very few would be served. And the conditions of those who were enslaved and those of gender who had no choice, there was a choice in the Christian journey that through the proclamation of the gospel, we are given the heart to redefine what they call submission, what they call taking your power and your gifts and your presence and reaching out to meet the needs of others. Service. It's the most powerful term we have as we as believers come together today and receive the cup and drink of it and we break bread together, and we eat of it. <coughs> the timing as we begin the new year to commune together is to wrestle with how we struggle with healing, how we understand God being the great healer. <coughs> it is the private mystery challenges it is ways in which we're meant to wrestle because we have to look at the spectrum of healing. This passage raises this immediately in our daily living. We understand we all come with our needs. We all come with the ways in which we are given <coughs> opportunity to serve others and to pray for their healing. We all come when we follow Christ and we see and receive him as the son of God. The power that the living word is. Don't shy away. Bring that struggle to Christ. Lay that before our Lord. <coughs> and Christ will lead. He will teach you. He will uphold you. He will bring you into communion. And he will strengthen you as we come together and receive the elements today. <coughs> Let us, my friends, hear <coughs> the word afresh. God is proclaiming healing and restoration. It is a promise we can trust. <coughs> it may not come in the ways in which we are given our timing, our forms of healing, our sense of wrestling with those deeper questions for those that we've prayed for who have passed those that we prayed for, and they continue to struggle. 
and those that we pray for, and we are astonished at their healing. The timing of receiving the message that Christ's ministry <coughs> is one of restoration and healing depends on our own trust, our own honesty, and our ability to look at the ways in which the apostles saw healing. And we know Paul, most of his life, was plagued by a physical condition and ailment. <coughs> And we know there is healing as Lazarus being raised from the dead and Andrew's mother-in-law being fully restored and becoming a significant disciple of Christ. Where are we in receiving and trusting the message of Christ, the declaration of the gospel to bring healing in our lives and stay open to be vessels of how God will use us. Even as we labor in conditions, we have questions. See, it is the trust that we extend to the living God that God will give us opportunities to be restorers and healers in others' lives. Where do we need to put our trust? Where do we need to wrestle with the ways in which restoration in our own lives needs to become deeper and more significantly established so that we might be the disciples as Andrew's mother-in-law was and taking her very life and love and being a part of caring for Christ at the most suffering element I can think of as he had gone through such degrees of suffering for his great love for us we know it was the fulfillment to be that perfect sacrifice for all humanity. And his crucifixion and then his resurrection conquered death, conquered disease and suffering, broke forth means of restoration and healing that is ever being poured out. We may be on different paths of that truth, but my friends, let us trust the living Lord who comes to be the restorer and the healer of our lives. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with me and let us affirm our faith together as we say the Apostles' Creed together, saying together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he has come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I value the ways in which God gives us opportunity to share our lives. And one of the greatest daily ways that we express our love and care for each other is the way we give. So friends, let us give our tithes and offerings, understanding that that is always to be a gift for the people of God, for the greater community. Let us be abundant givers, cheerful givers in the name of Christ.
What a blessing it is to be able to come together and gather around the table and remember Christ is our restorer. Christ is our healer. Bring all your burdens. Bring all your struggles. He calls us. He will uphold us. He will sustain us. Friends, let us come and celebrate the feast together and a pro proclaim as we break of the bread and we drink of the cup the unity that we have in the Spirit, the renewing promise of grace and strength, and the hope of healing and fullness. So, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks It is truly right and our greatest joy to give thanks and praise to you, almighty God. We give thanks and praise for the ways in which Christ, in the beginning of his ministry, declared the kingdom is here, enacting and sharing and demonstrating all power, all authority, restoration and healing. Gracious God, truly allow us to understand that in Christ you proclaimed your message of eternal life. In Christ Jesus, you fulfilled all the promises of the Son of God to come, the Messiah who brings the new covenant, the covenant which glorifies you, Almighty Father. And we give you thanks for you alone, O oh God, are the living and true hope. Teach us to dwell in the light. Teach us to have hope and ability 
to go down the roads in which we journey. When we do not have answers, but you sustain us. You are the fountain of life, the source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless are the praises that the holy saints who have gone before us are joining us now in this time of the sacrament of communion. The angels are declaring and singing forth your praise night and day. Help us to center and receive your presence today as we enter into this time of confession, of drawing near and trusting your power and presence and the sacrament that unites us. Through Christ, he has paid and given the perfect sacrifice. And gracious God, you call us to trust, to look at our lives and where we need to have cleansing, to yield to you, and to hear the good news of salvation once again. Speak to the areas of sorrowful pain in our lives. Allow us to know the power that Christ overcame death and rose from the grave. That same power dwells with us, almighty God. Teach us through the Holy Spirit, and we proclaim as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup today, that truly you have given us the gift of life. And for those who believe that we are the instruments of his work in this world, and to bring fulfillment and sanctification to all, these words are large, my God, but you have given us means as we come together to receive this time of feasting. May we be disciples of faith. May we be disciples who receive and disciples who unite and go forth, sharing the power of the gospel in our own lives and in those we love and in those that you will bring across our paths into the larger hurting community Oh, Lord God, we pray for our world. We pray for those areas of unrest that are worn torn. We pray for those that are suffering. We pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to work in and through your people in those regions of the world to bring forth touches and acts of mercy and care that are sustaining. We pray for our own nation, for the divisions and the ways in which we accept our polarization, for the ways in which we accept and become hard of heart for those who are suffering. In our midst, quicken our minds, soften our hearts, give us the means to be the powerful presence of hope. And may we as disciples, as we pray for our own families and the needs of those that we so ache for in our relationships that need healing. We lift up to you now and silence those names amongst our St. Paul family and amongst our own personal circles of fellowship and friendship. May your healing and restoration be with them. And may we now, as those who follow Christ, say together, as Christ taught his disciples to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of our Lord's arrest, he sat with his disciples, his beloved friends, and he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And giving thanks, he said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And the same way he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant. Shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, do this in remembrance of me. This is the new covenant of grace, mercy, 
and life anew in Christ. As often as we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we proclaim the soon coming return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are the instruments that declare the grace, salvation, and mercy in this hurting world. So friends, we invite you to come forward down the center aisle. There'll be a, a plate of bread. There'll be two um, trays of our juice, cups of juice, and there'll also be the kit. So if you'll take the bread in the center and you can take the cups from either of the plates and go around back to your seats in the exterior aisles, this will allow us to flow well. Friends, this is the feast of God for the people of God. Come, let us feast together.
join with me in prayer. We praise you, almighty God, for this sacrament that unites us, that brings forth a deeper understanding of your mercy and grace. And as the covenant proclaims new life in Christ, we are filled with that grace, mercy, and truth that extends the message of hope and love to all that we go forth and serve and care for. May we be renewed. May we receive this sacrament and be your vessels, just as Simon's mother-in-law chose to respond and serve. So, gracious God, we choose to serve in and through Christ, through his love and grace. For it is in his holy name that we pray. Amen.